everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Whoa. Beep, beep, beep. Daddy, beep. can I have a truck back? I just started playing with it. Welcome back to the channel. I think we could use that, good job. Yeah. Okay, here is your truck and trailer back. But believe it or not, this is not a toy. This is the new but unreleased Arc Captain Arc 130. This is an MMA or a stick welder and it conveniently fits in the palm of your hand. In the palm of your hand. In the palm of your hand. I know you got that knife for, from Doug at one eye costume. Now we're not gonna get into a bunch of crazy detail on this little stick welder. Our captain's getting ready to launch a Kickstarter program for this little guy right here. It is a 110 volt unit, and this thing will weld all the way up to one eighth inch rod, which is kind of crazy. Thank you, staring at me. I'm just thinking of what to say, okay? And here is the carrying case. Inside we have the stinger, we have a wire brush and a little chipping hammer that it came with, we've got a shoulder strap, and we have the ground clamp, and of course, the welder itself. Okay. Let's see if we can get the fit back, oh yeah. Everything is inside this little carrying case. You can see it is not heavy at all. Very light, very convenient. And just to prove that to you, do you want to feel how heavy it is? Yeah. All right. See if you can lift it up. <laughs> you said it wasn't. Try, we'll try two hands. I'm stronger than you, I think. Not too bad. Anyways, we'll talk more about this later. Let's get started on this project because I need to get this project. Done. <laughs> I do. <laughs> now this is an implement that I built years ago from scratch. It was a really cool project and it's done a really good job, but it needs some work because I kind of never fully finished it. I got it finished enough where I could use it, but when I built it, I actually built it with a stick welder. So I need to make a couple of modifications to it. And again, I want to continue to use a stick welder on it. So I'm gonna grab the coyote and we'll get this thing inside the shop. I sure hate that. Give me this before you get sweat stains in it, a little dirt ball. You threw the thing away, so how is it gonna stay still? I'm, I think I'm gonna keep this hat. Speaking of hats, I do still have hats available. The neon, I think I have three or four, maybe three left. The green ones like this, I think I have three left. And the tan and brown. Uh, how about the, how about moms? You like this one? You're good in that. Well, thank you. All right, get off that before you fall. Concrete is not forgiving. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know. I fall a lot. I know you like to fall in the videos. Dang it! Mm. No rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil was on my trail. I've been running. That started off as a joke, but that thing actually got me in the hip and it hurt. Ow, I didn't know I had that in there either. 
Nice big splinter. Okay, this, my friends, is a soil pulverizer. Okay, story time. I've mentioned before, it was quite a bit of a process to get to the point where we're at now on this property. I completely rebuilt my first home back in 2007. I think I was 21 years old. That's where I met the Keystone Girl. We then sold that house after I finished it. We bought our second home together, completely rebuilt that house. Then we sold that house, built our third house, sold that one, and now we own this property here with the cabin. And we are currently in the process of fixing up this property and fixing up the cabin. And this is where we plan on staying. Big selling point was the shop that I'm sitting in, right meow. Now on our second home, I had a lot of work to do on the property. We only had an acre and a half. I was pulling out trees. I was redoing retaining walls. It was all on kind of a hillside. And I had that yard completely torn apart. And what I needed was a soil pulverizer to reseed everything with grass. If you've ever looked up a soil pulverizer, they are freaking expensive. And there's not even a PTO or any hydraulics on them. It's all just mechanical moving parts, nothing that's driven by the tractor. You just pull it. Now at the time I was working as an electrician, I used to oversee an air separation plant. It was heavy industrial work located right there on the southern tip of Lake Michigan. I had access to a lot of scrap steel there. So I picked up this nice heavy duty I-beam right here, which is just scrap and this piece of fitter pipe. Again, it was scrap. I brought home a suitcase stick welder from work, not nearly as small as this one, and I used that to weld this entire thing together. And at the time, I did not own a CNC plasma table. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know they existed. So the whole idea of a soil pulverizer is that you drag it behind your tractor and all the stakes that are mounted across the front, and there's another row mounted across the back of that I-beam, those kind of bust up the dirt. And then as this roller rolls over it with the other stakes on it, kind of breaks up all the large chunks of dirt and uh, just kind of gets it prepped and ready. So you have a nice two or three inch soil bed for the grass seed. First thing that I did was I created the mounting system for the three point. I just used some three by three angle iron by quarter inch and I just stick welded all that stuff together. You can see some of my old stick welds right there. Look pretty good, a little bit of undercutting right there. Everything's nice and rusty. And I bought the bushings from TSC. As far as these stakes, those are just three quarter inch rigid conduit. So I cut a bunch of these and I cut an angle, 45 degree angle going this way forward so that as you drug it, it would actually drive itself into the dirt so you can bury those stakes and really tear up some soil. Now over time, you can kind of see right there, that stake has worn itself flat. There's no more point on it. Obviously dirt is abrasive and it flattened those things out. So I need to replace all of these stakes. You can see there's a couple of bent ones there, one there, a couple of them. And another thing is I made a mistake when I was building this. I didn't give myself enough room to actually hook the three point onto that bushing. So I had to remove one of the stakes right there that was in front of the three point. So that's what I started with. I built the I-beam section first with the stakes and the whole mounting bracket. The cool part is the whole swing arm assembly. So this is a piece of six inch fitter pipe. Then I took some three eighths round stock and I cut all of these stakes across this whole roller and I stick welded every one of those on there. One thing I do remember is that was a pain in the ass. Then I have a couple pieces of like half inch flat bar here. I forgot where I got that from, but those are the main supports for the swing arm. Then I bought these flange mount bearings. These are greasable. I bought these off of eBay. Then I have a blank flange here that the fitters gave me for each side. Those fit right inside of the six inch fitter pipe. I welded a large backer nut to the back side of it that there's no longer access to. Then I have a large bolt here with the shoulder on it. And I basically tightened another backer nut right up to that shoulder and it creates a nice pivot point for this thing to spin. Now I built this thing 10 years ago and I don't even know if I've ever greased these things. And this thing still spins perfectly, nice and quiet. Nothing that I did, it's just apparently they were pretty decent bearings. Now for the cool part. So this swing arm here has a spring tension set up. So it keeps constant downforce as it runs over those large clumps of dirt. It keeps that downforce so it can break them up. In order to do that, what I have here, this is a fork spring out of a dirt bike. I just cut them down. I only used one spring. I actually still have one of these that I'd saved over all those years. Cut it in half, I used it for each side. 
And then this piece right here, some of you may recognize this. This is actually the stationary hinge. Well, I guess it's all stationary for like a pasture gate. So this would through bolt through your wooden post. And then you would have this part sticking up vertically that you would actually set your hinge on for your gate. So I was just rummaging around at Menards and I found that and I thought it might work and it did. I just drilled a hole in the swing arm here and then I put this little quick clip through there. I don't know the exact name of these damn things. I'm sure I'll get made fun of for that. And I have a nut at the bottom with a washer and I have a nut at the top with a washer. And then what I did was I cut a three quarter inch rigid sleeve and I tightened up that nut and washer to each end of those sleeves. As I lift up on this roller, you can see that the spring is still held underneath this piece of plate and that conduit sleeve slides through this mounting piece right here and it allows that swing arm to keep that constant down pressure. On this mounting stanchion right here for the tension setup, not only are these bolts that mount it, but these bolts also keep that swing arm from going one way or the other. It kind of maxes them out. This spring system also does that as well. Then you'll notice I have a hole right here. If I put a pin through that on each side, what it'll do is it'll keep that swing arm from going up any further, which allows me to use the roller here to aerate my yard. So only the roller will hit the ground and the stakes will not, so I'm not tearing up my yard. Now, of course, I didn't design the soil pulverizer. There's already plenty of them out there on the market. I just kind of copied the idea and kind of made it my own. But surprisingly, this whole build right here, it worked right from the get-go. I didn't really have to make any adjustments to it besides removing those two stakes just so I can get hooked up to it with the three-point hitch. The only thing is, is I never got around to painting it. I needed it right away, so I built it, I used it, and I set it aside because I had way too much going on. Now, we're not gonna paint this thing today, but I am gonna be needing this thing here in the spring when the ground starts to dry out, and I wanna make sure that it is ready. But here is my problem. When I designed the soil pulverizer, I designed it for the first loader tractor that I ever owned, and that was a John Deere 1025R. Great little tractor, got a lot of use out of it. We only had an acre and a half at the time, but now I have what's the equivalent of a three series John Deere, the Coyote CK2610. I freaking love this tractor. And this thing is just a little too narrow. Doesn't actually cover the tracks. It's close, but when you actually look at where the roller and the stakes are at, I'm a good six inches in on both sides. Yep, Holy this is heavy, damn. So what I have here is some heavy duty, you might even say beefy, four inch C-channel. It's very heavy gauge. This came from a job that I did. We were removing the steel structure that mounted all of the stadium lights over a football field. One of the sketchiest jobs I've ever done. Anyways, we're gonna cut this up and kind of create some wings that come off the side just so we can get a couple of more stakes on this thing. I'm not too concerned about the roller. That would actually be a total pain in the ass to extend that. I really don't want to mess around with that. I just need like another six inches. I mean, that would be excessive. I just want to extend the stakes out just to bust up the material and cover my tracks. Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's get started. I want to test this little welder out. <laughs> just a cute little guy. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I removed one of the stakes here, which gives me a little bit of surface area on the front side of this I-beam. It looks like I can get a good five inches of weld on the top and bottom. And what I'll do is I'll stick that C-channel out to the length that I want, which I'm not sure yet. And I'll stack them too high because this is eight inches tall, the I-beam, and the C-channel is four inches. So I'll stack two of them to give me the eight inches. I'll come out this way and then I'll have three more stakes here. They'll stick out a little more further forward than these other stakes, but it really doesn't matter. And that'll give me that extra wing that I need just to cover my tracks. All 
All right, so here's what we've got. I've got my two pieces of four inch C-channel. I've got everything ground down and somewhat beveled for that weld. And then I have this jerry rig set up right here. This is actually my X-Tool smoke purifier, which works extremely well with a little three inch duct that comes up and I've got it jerry rigged right here. This is going to catch all the smoke and fumes that come out of that stick welder because when you stick weld, uh, it puts off quite a bit of smoke and it'll smoke up the shop real quick. Again, anyone that's new to the channel, that's temporary. I'm still in the works of putting a ventilation system here in the shop. And we have the ARC 130 plugged into a 120 outlet that's on its own dedicated 20 amp circuit. And your other, that's kind of loud. Lots of sucking going on there. Other essentials for stick welding, you're gonna need a thicker set of welding gloves. Typically, I like to guide the welding electrode or the rod with my left hand, and then I hold the stinger with my right. More stick welding essentials, your chipping hammer and your wire brush. These are must haves. You gotta chip that slag off, and you gotta clean up that weld, because typically, it's gonna look like shit. Other than that, that's all you need for stick welding. Stick welding is very cheap form of welding, and it's very versatile. Indoor, outdoor, five stories up, five stories down, wherever the fuck you want to go, it doesn't matter. And I've got our little R Captain turned on. The only setting on here is the amperage. That's it. We're using 332nd 7018 rod. This is also referred to as a finish rod or a drag rod. Typically, you want to use a 7018 rod on a nice, clean, prepped surface, which is what we've done here. And for 332nd rod, it's calling for anywhere between 50 to 100 amps. I did do a little bit of testing first, so I know that I'm gonna go on the higher end of that. I'm right at 99, 100 amps. This is thicker material, so better off being on a higher amperage anyway. Get my hood on. Woo! Not bad. Okay, here we go, Meow. Put on my surgeon gloves. Hopefully we'll be able to see all that smoke getting sucked into the uh, X-Tool smoke purifier. Now, if you're in a pinch, that really is not a bad option. But I will have links for that in the description as well. Okay, let's tack this together. One tack. Two tacks. All right, I'm sucking it in there. Might be hard to see on camera, but I can see it. All right, we are tacked together. Everything looks nice and straight. I'm gonna weld up these ends first, and then I'll just alternate a stitch weld on top, stitch weld on bottom. That way this thing doesn't cup it all on me. Another little stick welding tip is if you get in a tight spot and the length of the rod is just too long and you just don't have the room, you can take it and you can bend it. And then you can take your stinger, hook it up to the end of it, and you can give yourself any welding angle that you want to get in some of those tight spaces. But once you get up to that spot where that flux is all broken away, you'll have to regroup right there because without that flux, the weld goes to real quick. But you can burn that rod up to good flux again and continue with this rod so you don't waste it. Not my best weld, but I'm a little rusty. All right, now that we have it all tacked, basically on the smooth side, this is where all of the stakes are going to mount to. And being that there's a seam there, it's probably gonna get water trapped in it. I think I'm going to end up just filling this entire thing with weld, and then I'm gonna grind it down smooth, or at least grind it smooth where the stakes are gonna go. But what I really wanna do with this project here is use it to test this little art captain arc 130. This little welder is actually a prototype. It's not available yet to buy. They're actually getting ready to launch that Kickstarter program and I will have a link for that Kickstarter program down in the description in case you're interested in something like this. I do think that this is a very nice little welder to have. This would have really came in handy when I had a service van. All you need is a generator or somewhere on a building or your work site somewhere with 110 power and you're good to go. And I think that our captain, don't quote me on this, but I believe that they're offering like 
early bird specials if you do get in on that Kickstarter program that you could also have some additional savings of up to like 30% off. And I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but the price point on this thing is only gonna be like $100. Anyways, back to the project. I wanna see how good this thing will weld. Be welding nice, nice and consistent, smooth. Got a nice puddle there. Anytime you see the slag starting to peel off, that's a good sign. That means you get a nice clean weld. I always like to just scrape it on the side there. Oh, look at that little head right there. Wow, he's lucky. Now it's 332nd rod, so you're not gonna have a real wide puddle like you would with like eighth inch rod. Get all that splatter out of there, you know? You know how I feel about welding splatter. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. Can we focus? Focus. There we go. See we got a couple little pockets right there. That flux probably really wasn't working all that great when I started that weld. And then here it's looking pretty consistent. We got good fusion here. Not a bad weld. So far, so good. That was like a two and a half inch pass or so. So I'm gonna throw you guys in a time lapse now. I'm gonna flip this thing around, get this thing all welded up. We'll take a look at the welds one more time. This rod that I'm using is kind of old, and I think that was a reason why I was having a couple of the issues I was having. It was kind of cutting on and off, and I think that this rod probably has some moisture in it. Ideally, you want to keep your welding rod in a rod oven, which basically bakes any moisture that would absorb into these rods. It bakes it right out of there. Anyways, who gives a shit? Okay, here we go. So on this top side, this was a straight up butt joint. I had a, a pretty decent first pass here except for those couple of little holes, which we looked at a second ago. And this area looks pretty shitty. I actually had to readjust a little bit, and uh, when you readjust, you will see it in your weld. Here's a couple stop starts. Uh, this is when I readjusted. I moved my left hand that was kind of guiding the rod, and I moved my feet around, and you could see what happens. That's why it's very important to make sure that you're gonna be comfortable throughout that full motion of that weld where you don't have to make any adjustments because you're gonna see it in the weld. So overall, not super proud of my welds. I'm a little rusty. New machine, machine, you know, excuses. Okay, the other side looks a lot better. This one, I actually had a nice gap that I was able to fill. So that puddle was able to actually get in there and fill and kind of flatten out a little bit, which you can see there's not a lot of height on it. That is a much cleaner looking weld, except for right here. The starts were kind of rough. I was getting a lot of like pockets in there and that slag was building up quick. But once you got that weld hot, it kind of just melted in there like butter. I think this was a start and stop right here. Now a situation where you would be using a little stick welder like this, probably not a project where you're trying to get like precision welds, like perfect dimes. It's mobile, you don't need a lot to use it. So overall I'd say a little machine like this is definitely built around convenience. I will say, that little X-Tool smoke purifier actually worked. There is a little tiny haze in here, not much. The other day I was doing a little bit of practicing with that art captain and I had to basically leave the building. It was pretty bad, I had to open up the doors. Temporarily, it did the trick. Now again, I'm not trying to sell you on art captain. It's just a cool little tool that I wanted to share with you. It's not even available yet. But again, if you're interested in that Kickstarter program they're gonna be launching, I will have that link down in the description because you could save some money once they launch it, once it's made available. If you're in the trades and you think something like that would be handy on the job site or in your service van, tell your boss, it's a good option. Anyways, we're gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna continue this build in another video. I wanna spend a lot more time pulling this thing apart. We're gonna get it all fabricated up, get it repainted, and actually test this thing out. It might actually take a couple of videos to do all that. It's gonna be a bit of a project, but it should be a good one. Anyways, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Is that a wounded beaver?
you get a case of the yawns? Yeah. How many times are you gonna yawn? Huh? How many times are you gonna yawn? I don't know. This is a pretty cool toy. Yeah. Do you even know what this is? Welder. Huh? Welder. Why are you yawning so much? I don't know. It is a welder, very good. You know I'm recording, right? No. Everyone's gonna see this. What is that? It's a hook. There's like a little ranger that can come with it. No, not a ranger, a four-wheeler. And you can like hook it and then... You know what that is though, right? Yeah. It's a winch. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> you gotta smash the crap out of this thing. What in the heck? Oh. Who did this? Oh my gosh. You broke up. Stand like a man, stand like a man, stand like a man. Stand like a man. Probably made in Guatemala. Guatemala? <laughs> Hi!